I got involved in this when our emergency coordinator came up to me and said, Carl, you can build anything out of nothing. Can you build a ventilator? And I said, I don't know. I got to figure out what the hell it is first. So I spent about six hours online and I came across a great tutorial out of England on a Manly MP3. Patented 1961. No electricity on it whatsoever. And here's a rough schematic. This Manly MP3 ran straight pneumatically and it was known for its reliability. And it ran on 60 kilopascals inlet pressure or about 8 psi. But it's just a set of bellows, adjustable, delivering air with valving. So I started building that and realized I could build them quicker if I used a windshield wiper motor. Anything to get the bellows to go up and down. Well, here's, here's the motor. And ignore all the wires except power and ground. I took the wiper motors out of four junkers and took them to a friend who's forgotten more, more about electricity than I ever knew and he came up with the control mechanism for them. So we can dial these things down to, to uh, 12 RPM. This thing has uh, adjustable volume, adjustable frequency, it has pre-filters, a UV sterilizer, a HEPA post filter, you can add oxygen to it, and it's got a mask. And the whole thing, minus the electrical parts, was built for about $20. This was built with a circular saw, a drill, and an impact driver, and a handful of screws, a couple of hinges, and just stuff that I had laying around. But you can build it in any woodworking shop. So I built this. Now this one is dependent on an external vacuum source. It needs another set of bellows working at the same time and frequency is this, this one behind me, to supply the suction because after it will take your exhaled air, bubble it through a sterilizing fluid, and take it out of the room. Okay, it's all weird. Okay, the vacuum system is run by a shop vac right now outside around the corner to cut the noise down. But you have to have a bleeder valve to let air in the system, otherwise you'll burn out your vacuum cleaner because it needs air. So this is the adjustment for the vacuum for that, for this one. So enough of that, here it is. Set of bellows, sailcloth, sewn by my girlfriend. These discs were made by a friend who's a shipwright. And while I do have, I happen to have hose clamps that were big enough to screw around it, they're made to be held on with a twist of haywire. There's a groove in the discs, which is way cheaper than, than the um, hose clamps, but I happen to have them. Because this was a ball joint, this was flopping around too much. So I, I had to put this little holder in here to keep it, keep it in alignment. When I first had this, these little bits of rubber, a quarter inch outboard gas line. When I had it originally, they just had a twist of haywire around them. And it worked fairly well, but they did tend to creep a little bit. So I cut sections of three quarter inch aluminum pipe and drilled and tapped them, put a bolt on them. And this is just aluminum that was laying around. You can hook it up any way you need to. Like I said, it was built for about $20. All right, this and this, the control mechanisms, about 140 or 150. All right, the rest of it is wood and screws. This is a, this is a vacuum jar valve. 
valves are a disc of wood with a piece of neck seal out of a leaky, leaky dry suit for a seal. This is the valve control for the exhaust gas. Has a valve just like this in the bottom of it, controlled by this. These little strips of ice cream plastic plastic are just to cut the friction down. The same over here on the valve. Now, I built this out of stuff that I had around. If you're going to build one, you want to get cheater valves, plumbing cheater valves. They're one-way valves. I stuck one on there because this valve was leaking a little bit. These cost next to nothing. Put one one way and you put the other one the other way in a little wooden box and you've got a set of bellows. All these are just screws through a piece of wood and I put a piece of quarter inch copper pipe through the middle of it to cut the friction down. Each one of these has a little copper bushing in there. Again, just stuff that was laying around. These are made with a hole saw. After I put the bushings in here, it was too loose and it wouldn't work, so I had to put a spring. There's a spring in here for tension. And there's another spring over here, which is a piece of recoil spring. Just giving it a bit tension just to hold it open long enough until this can get back and, and close it. The air comes out through here into the bottom of this. This has this has um, microfiber cloth in it, about eight layers. Pre-filter, make sure the sawdust gets out of it. This is the UV light in here. It's in a glass jar. I'll just, there you are. Um, don't want to look at that. It's guaranteed cataracts. Um, the light doesn't put out any heat, but if it does, you can fill this with water. The sterilized air comes out, goes through this. This has a HEPA filter in it. Don't ask me why, I just put it there. All right, the air comes through here. You can put oxygen in here. And then it comes through into the mask. Goes through here, this is a sterilizing solution to kill any bugs because the air going in to you is clean. It may not be clean coming out. And it goes from here and it exits the room. The mask is made by cutting a two liter pop bottle on an angle until you get the size that fits your face. If you cut it on an angle, plug the hole and inhale on it and it sticks to your face, you're good. The air comes in here. The exhaust air leaves, and it works.